Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to explain how to eat for pure muscle growth. Now nutrition for muscle growth often gets overcomplicated and it can sometimes be quite overwhelming to know what to actually focus on. So today I'm going to give you five steps to follow if you want to optimize your diet and maximize your progress in the gym. Let's get started. So the first step is to establish an energy surplus which basically just means that you want to be consuming more calories per day than you're actually burning. Now you don't necessarily have to be in an energy surplus to build muscle, and you can even build muscle if you're in a calorie deficit, but the more advanced you are, the less realistic this is going to be, and even if you're a beginner, this is not going to be optimal. Now the size of the surplus is going to depend on a variety of factors, like your goals, your current body composition, and most importantly, your training age. So if you just started lifting weights and you haven't really paid that much attention to your diet so far, then you can probably get away with being in a larger surplus just because your potential for muscle growth is so high. But the more advanced you are and the closer you are to your genetic ceiling, the less likely it is that you're going to put on huge amounts of muscle. And in that case, it's probably wise to take a more conservative approach and have a smaller surplus and gain weight at a slower rate. So as a good rule of thumb, if you're a beginner, then you probably want to increase your calories about 10 to 20% of your maintenance calories and gain about one to 2% of your body weight per month. Whereas if you're more advanced, then you probably want to take a slower approach than that and maybe increase your calories by 5 to 10% and only gain about half to 1% of your body weight per month. Now, this seems really slow, but you've got to remember that muscle growth is a really slow process and it just takes time. And if you try to force feed it and try to increase your calories more than that and try to gain weight at a faster rate, then the only thing that's really going to happen is that you're going to put on more body fat. For instance, in a study with resistance trained athletes, the group that consumed a small calorie surplus put on the same amount of muscle mass and strength compared to a group that consumed 600 calories more than that, with the only difference being that the group that consumed the largest surplus put on five times the amount of body fat. So once you've figured out how much weight you want to gain, you want to also make sure that you're tracking this accordingly. So what I would suggest is that you simultaneously track both your calories as well as your morning body weight every single day, or at least three times a week, and then just take a weekly average of your body weight. And then you just want to make sure that you're gaining weight at the appropriate rate, and if you're gaining weight too quickly, then you would want to reduce your calories. Whereas if you're not gaining weight at all, or maybe you're even losing weight, then you would want to increase your calories. And then you just want to continue doing that until you've reached your goal weight. And then you could just maintain that weight. Or if you want to, you could go on a fat loss phase and get rid of some of that additional body fat that you put on during your bulking phase. So the next step is to set your protein target. So our calories get delivered to our body in the form of so-called macronutrients or macros. And protein is actually the most important macro for muscle growth to occur because it's providing our body with the building blocks that we need for muscle growth to actually happen. And if you look at research, then high protein diets tend to outperform low protein diets in terms of muscle growth. So we want to make sure that we're getting an adequate amount of protein every single day. Now, the recommended range in the research is to get 1.6 to 2.2 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. And that is actually enough to optimize muscle growth. So traditionally, bodybuilders have been known to eat massive amounts of protein. And while this isn't dangerous or unhealthy, it's just simply not necessary. And if you eat protein diets that are that high, then you might run the risk of getting inadequate amounts of carbohydrates and fats. Now, the only time I would recommend someone having protein intakes that are even higher than that is if you're someone who really struggles with hunger and tends to put on weight pretty quickly. In that case, it might be a wise idea to have a high protein intake, maybe even up to three grams per kilogram of body weight, just because protein tends to be really satiating. And another reason might be if you're a vegan, just because the protein quality that you're getting probably isn't that high. So it might be a good idea to compensate for that by having higher protein intakes. If on the other hand, you're someone who really struggles with gaining weight and you're a quote unquote hard gainer, in that case, I might recommend that you keep your protein intake a little bit lower. So maybe only have 1.6 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight because you want to avoid feeling full and constantly being satiated and you want something that actually increases your appetite. So in that case, I might recommend that you get most of your calories from carbohydrates and fats and keep your protein to a minimum. So step number three is to set your carbohydrate and fat intake. Now, these are the two remaining macronutrients apart from protein, and they both play an important role in making sure that we have enough energy both during our day and also during our training sessions. So fats are our preferred energy source at rest, and they also have many different functions in our body that are very important. For instance, hormone production like testosterone. But once you hit the minimal requirement of fats, you don't really get that much benefit of increasing it even further. Now, how much the minimal requirement is, is going to be really individual, but I think a good starting place for most people is to have about 20 to 35% of your daily calories from fat, which for most people will probably be somewhere between 
half a gram up to 1.5 grams of fat per kilogram of body weight. Personally, I like staying at about one gram of fat per kilogram of body weight, just because it's really easy to calculate and it's also adequate for most people. But see what fits your personal preference, what fits your lifestyle, what foods you like to eat, and just make sure that you're not sacrificing protein intake and carbohydrate intake for really high fat intakes, just because ketogenic diets that are like really high in fat have been shown to be inferior for muscle growth if you compare them to diets that are low in fat or moderate in fat with higher carb intakes. And then carbs are our primary fuel source during training, and they also help us recover from training. So we want to make sure that we're getting an adequate amount of them during the day. So the exact amount is going to depend on a variety of factors, like how much volume you're doing during the week, how many days per week you're training. Also the rep range that you're training in, higher rep ranges tend to need more carbohydrates than if you're doing very low rep training. But I think a good guideline for most people is to stick to about three to five grams of carbohydrates per kilogram of body weight per day. So what I like to do is I like to set my protein and my fats first, and then just fill the rest of the calories with carbohydrates. And as long as you're hitting that three to five gram range, you're probably good to go. And if you've been enjoying this video so far, then be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. So step number four is to time your meals right. So this includes how often you're eating during the day and the specific macronutrients that you're eating during those meals. Now, this is a lot less important than the total daily amount that you're eating in terms of calories and macronutrients, but it is probably going to make a small difference. So you do want to pay attention to this. So first, you want to take the total daily amount of protein that you're eating and spread it evenly between three to six meals, just because that is going to maximize protein synthesis. And you also want to make sure that you're having one of those meals before your training and one of those meals after your training. So I would say about one hour before your training and one to two hours after your training. And if you want to leave no stone unturned, then it's probably a good idea to also have a protein feeding about one hour before you go to bed and make sure that it's a slow digesting protein. So basically anything that's not whey, just because that is going to make sure that you're having some kind of amino acids in your bloodstream during the night. And in terms of the other macronutrients, it's probably not that important why having pre and post workout, as long as you're not going into your training sessions feeling overly hungry. and if you're having an adequate amount of carbohydrates during the day, then it's probably not necessary to have huge amount of carbs pre and post workout like some people might suggest, just because you are going to deplete glycogen during your training sessions, but not nearly as much as in something like, say for instance, an endurance sport like a team sport. That being said, I do think there might be a small benefit of having higher carb intakes around your workout. So that might be something that you would want to try. But again, if you don't do it, it's not going to be a deal breaker. As long as you're getting in enough calories and enough of each macronutrient during the day, this kind of stuff probably isn't going to make that much of a difference, if at all. But if you're trying to get maximum gains, then obviously every little bit counts. So the last step is to add the right supplements. Now, supplements are the least important factor when it comes to building muscle mass, especially if you're a natural and you're not taking anabolic steroids. And there aren't really that many supplements that actually work. And even those that do, they don't really do that much for you. We're talking about maybe a 5% difference, but if you have some extra money and you're already doing the previous steps correctly, then why not? I mean, a 5% difference is still a 5% difference. So first let's talk about protein powder. Now, technically I wouldn't really consider this to be a supplement just because it doesn't really make a difference if you're getting 30 grams of protein from protein powder or some kind of meat or dairy source, but most people do consider it to be a supplement and it does help people with reaching their protein target. And basically you can take any kind of whey protein from any well-known brand, they're pretty much all the same. Unless you're having your protein powder at night, in that case, I would recommend having casein protein instead. And if you're a vegan, then you want to opt for something called a vegan's whey, which is a blend of pea and rice protein, just because that is very high in leucine, which is the most important amino acid for muscle growth. So next, let's talk about creatine. Creatine is probably the most well-studied supplement out there, and it has been shown time and time again to be really effective at improving your strength as well as your muscle mass. It also has a ton of other benefits that I'm not going to go into in this video, but you just want to make sure they're actually getting creatine monohydrate as that has been shown to be the most effective form of creatine and it's also the cheapest, so that's an added benefit. And then just take three to five grams every single day, depending on your body size. So if you're heavier, take five grams. If you're lighter, take three grams. And there's no need to cycle on and off of it like some people suggest. Just take three to five grams and you should be good to go. Next, it can also be a good idea to have caffeine before your workout, either in form of coffee, a pre-workout supplement, or some kind of energy drink, because caffeine has been shown to improve performance as well as arousal, while also reducing fatigue and your perceived exertion. I've already talked about this in detail in my video on how to maximize your workouts, but in short, you want to make sure that you're having three to five milligrams of caffeine about 30 to 90 minutes before your workout, 
just make sure that you're not having it too late in the day because caffeine can have a negative impact on your subsequent night of sleep. And then lastly, in terms of supplements, you might want to consider taking a low dose multivitamin supplement. But if you're already eating a variety of protein sources as well as fruits and vegetables, then you're probably not going to need this, especially if you're in a calorie surplus. So if you follow these five steps, especially the first three steps, then you should be able to make great progress in the gym. Obviously you want to make sure that you're training in an intelligent manner. And then you also want to make sure that your sleep is on point, which I've made a whole video about. So if you want to learn more about that, just check out this video right here. So thank you so much for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video.